So this was a question which was asked in IES 2021 paper, question 1F, describe the methods used in isolating secular trend in time series. So there are four or five methods. I mean, for the marks which are given, I'm going to discuss two methods here. So secular trend is also called the long-term trend. This is also <clears throat> called the long-term trend. Right. So it shows the general tendency of the data either to increase or decrease. So in general, over the long period of time, is the data increasing or is the data decreasing? So the general tendency of the data to increase or decrease over time. Over time. Right. So, I mean, there can be several types of trends. For example, you can have a linear trend. So you have a time out here. You have the value of the variable out here. And you can have a trend like this. So it's an upward trend, upward linear trend. Upward linear trend. Or you can have tuck, tuck, tuck. Variable here, time here. It is the downward linear trend. Have a You can also have a curvy linear trend. For example, like this. Huh? And the time here, you can have a curve like this. It's a, it's a non-linear trend or a curvy linear trend. It's a non-linear trend. So I'll be talking about two methods here. So there are other methods also. So I'm going to talk about the methods of the graphical uh, presentation and the method of semi-averages. So there are the methods of, uh, I mean, basically you have also have the method of moving averages there, right? And you can also use econometric modeling. So uh, I'm going to discuss two methods here. So methods. Of isolating secular trends. Methods of isolating secular trend. Huh? So the first method is graphical method. Graphical method. For example, you can have, for example, something like this. So you have time out here. You have the variable X out here, whose value you're trying to see how it is growing over the time. So it is somewhat like this. Hmm? So now what you can, these, this is the actual data. Huh. So you make it like this. Tick. So, and then you can have, if you're an experienced econometrician, you can have, uh, I mean, you can just think that this is going to be the trend line. Uh, this is the trend line. Uh, 
so over the time this is this is moving like this so this is the trend line so this is the graphical method uh, so what you have done is that you have plot the uh, plot the series on on the graph right and then the smooth freehand curve is drawn through the points as you guys could see here so i've just drawn the curve right so and i can get the general tendency of the time series whether it is increasing or decreasing so, I mean, how this curve is going to be, how I have drawn the red line that is based on the experience. So you might draw it in a little different way. I might draw it in a little different way. And of course, this trend line could also be, so for example, the actual data is only till here. Yeah. The actual data is only till here. So if I want to forecast this particular point, I can just extend this line. I can just extend this line beta till here. Huh? So it's like this. It can be extended to forecast the values. Huh? So, but the trend line should be such so that you have the equal number of values which are above and below it. Something like that. Huh? So you have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, or approximately. So the, when you are drawing the trend line, uh, you should have the way that there is equal number of values above and below it, above and below it. That should be there. And the trend line should be a smooth curve. So, but there are disadvantages. You no, know? I mean, it depends on the value judgment. I could have drawn it in, it in some other way also. I mean, probably some of you might have thought it to be like this. Why not? Right? So. It depends on the value judgment. Uh, so that's there. It depends upon individual judgments. Right. And uh, I, mean, I mean, although we have said that, yes, it could be used for forecasting, it is not, it is dependent upon the experience of the econometrician. You can't just use it. I mean, because it is very arbitrary. Uh, that is also the problem. The problem is that uh, the drawing of the curve is arbitrary. Drawing of the curve is that free, so it can't be used for any predictions of the trend. So that was the first method. Yeah. Graphical method. This guy is the first method. The second method is the method of semi averages. The method of semi averages. So, what do you do in this method? Uh, so, semi averages is, of course, I mean, it is talking about the average. And let us see how we are going to talk about this. Uh, so, series is divided into two equal parts. So, you have the value of the variable x out here and you have the time out here. So, this is the value of. These are the actual values of the first three time periods, right? And uh, these are, let's say, the actual values of the next three time periods. Huh? 
okay so let me just draw the uh, curve top like this and uh, like this then i take the average of these three values so there are three values i have taken the average of three these three values and since this is the time period 1 this is time period 2 this is time period 3 and i have taken the average of these three values let's say this comes out to be the average of these three values and i have plotted it for the time period 2 this is the average of the time now so for these three time periods this is the average so just so i plotted it for 2 okay now again for this for this part also what i have done is that uh, this is what your t4 t5 t6 like this so you take the average of these three and let's say this average comes out to be like this okay. and i have drawn it for the average of t4 t5 t6 which is at t5 uh, so one i have divided the entire uh, entire thing entire data into two parts and uh, then I have taken the averages of these two parts. And then I've plotted these averages. And then I have plotted this line. So this line which you are seeing. This line, this, this line which I have drawn. This is what the trend line is out here. This is the method of semi averages this guy is the method of semi average so each semi average so this one is the semi average this is paired with the center of the time periods of its part right and then the two pairs are uh, joined together by a line segment uh, to get the trend and if you have the odd number of data then you can just for example you also have t7 uh, so you will say t1 t2 t3 you will remove t4 the middle time period will just remove and you will have t5 t6 t7 so if you have odd number of years there so the good thing is that it is an objective method so whether you apply or i apply so we will be getting the same value uh, we will be getting the same but it is not dependent upon the experience of the econometrician nothing like that so it is it is an objective method so whether you will find the method well whether you will find the answer or i will find the answer both of us will get the same answer so it's an objective method that's a good thing it is an objective method Because anyone applying this to a given data would get identical trend value. So that's the merit of this. That's the merit of this method. The demerit of this method is that it can only give a linear trend. Whether the linear trend exists or not, nobody knows, but it can only give a linear trend. Right? It can only give a linear trend. It 
irrespective. irrespective of whether it exists or not. Another is that, uh, I mean, it is a crude method, right? I mean, we don't know whether the other components are being isolated or not. So it's, it's a very crude method. Right? So we don't know whether the effects of the other components are completely, uh, what, do you call, what, do you, what do you call, completely eliminated or not. Uh, so it's a crude method. It's a crude method because, I mean, we don't know whether the effects of the other component, a cyclical component, seasonal component, uh, irregular component, I mean, the effects of those components in the time series, are they eliminated or not, right? Since we don't know. whether the effects of other components are completely eliminated or not. They're completely eliminated or not, right? So this is uh, what I wanted to do in this question. Thank you, Vita.